Okay, fam, welcome back. So today I we're going to go over the uh, Bitcoin miners as well as the crypto stocks. And we're also actually going to go over AMC and GME. We haven't done that in a while. So with that being said, let's get it. All right. So first thing I want to start with here is Bitcoin. We already went over the uh, the whole earnings spiel yesterday. If you guys haven't seen that, um, go ahead and check out the previous video that we did on uh, the Grayscale Trusts. But anyways, look, long story short, so Mario apparently missed earnings. And what I have to say about that is the market's probably already expected that. Okay, it was a buy the rumor, sell the news. So the miners pump into the earnings and then they dump on the confirmation of the earnings missing. How do markets know this? Well, it's quite simple because uh, the time frame in which it was trading three months prior to the earnings, you can see it was November now. Where was the price of Bitcoin three months ago? Uh, well, basically up until October, it was pretty much around 50-ish to roughly about $65,000, okay? So the theory is that the higher the price of Bitcoin goes, the more profitable the miners are going to become. So what am I expecting after Mara's earnings? Again, Mara is the, as far as I know, it is the biggest miner, at least here in the U.S., uh, so going forward, if the price of Bitcoin does keep going up, which it's probably going to do, um, again, it's probably going to go higher into next year um, for quite some time, I can imagine. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. So that equals minor profitability. The markets know this. They know that likely the next earnings season that comes up for these miners is going to equal profitability for the miners, right? Cash flow, all that stuff. Uh, they're going to be cash flow positive. They're going to be in profit. So the markets are probably going to buy these miners up into that earnings uh, ahead of time, knowing that's likely going to happen. Um, because again, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you got to think about this in, um, in, in terms of smart money. Okay. They want to be buying, look, smart money is buying at these support zones and I'll go over this in a minute. Um, they're not buying upon the earnings okay they're buying into the earnings they want to be buying these things when they're cheap because by the time it even gets to the earnings they're going to be they're likely going to be expensive so basically what i'm saying here is they're buying right in this area right here in three months from now or probably even less than three months from now maybe even two months from now um the miners are probably going to likely be higher up here you know kind of in this range maybe in this range maybe even higher than that uh, and by the time people are looking at their earnings saying, oh, oh, earnings was good. The price is high. Uh, you know, maybe I should buy now, buy some Mara up here at $60 or whatever. By that time, you know, likely these guys are, would have already loaded their bags back here and they'll be looking to dump. Okay. I'm just going to tell you guys like it is. All right. So um, I actually want to go over, uh, let me see if I can find it first. Where, where are you meme stocks? You've ran away. I can't find you. Okay, so here it is, GME AMC. Um, so we all know that last quarter, GME did actually have good earnings. Well, mixed earnings, okay, whatever. But for some reason, the market dumped it off, I guess because there wasn't an earnings call for guidance or whatever. You know, it's whatever. Uh, we probably should have put our call debit spreads a little further on time. Whoopsies. Uh, lesson learned on that one going forward with stocks anyways. Um so something I want to point out here is we do appear to be getting above this line here. Okay. This is an important line. This is a heavily traded zone. So uh, if we get weekly confirmation above this line, I would say that's extremely bullish. Again, there is some earnings coming up uh, next month for this one. Um, whether we get guidance or not, I don't think that really matters in this instance. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, we already know GameStop's in a good position. They have like $5 billion in cash, all that stuff. Not worried about that. Here, Here's my thing about this, okay? The last time that these meme stocks had a massive pump was when the Fed funds rate was at all-time lows and the crypto bull run was going to the moon, okay? When did this happen? It happened when Trump was in office at the end of the having year, okay? And right now, we're pretty much exactly there, okay? Except Trump's going to be in office in January, the Fed's probably likely going to keep cutting rates. And when Trump gets in office, you know, if Powell doesn't drop rates fast as humanly possible, like Trump wants him to, which in this case would be a bullish thing, not bearish, because again, we had a pandemic back then. We're likely not going to have one this time. So dropping rates to the floor in this case, the markets would love that. Okay. 
uh, because again, it's cheap money, makes it easier to go speculate on stocks that make no money that could potentially do like 10, 20 X's, right? <laughs> Uh, companies that make no money can potentially be profitable now. Um, you know, maybe people would be worried it might cause an, a major resurgence of inflation, but I highly doubt it. But the point I'm making here is that the correlation between the meme stocks and crypto. Okay, I think likely the meme stocks will rocket even if, even if uh, the earnings don't look so good because, again, the correlation with crypto is real. Okay. You guys can see back here exactly what happened during the same time Bitcoin was going to the moon. Guess what GME did? It went to the moon. Okay. So again, we do have the monthly here. You guys can see we got the golden crosses very far away from being overbought here. You can already see GME tapping that set of EMAs there, getting ready to break out above this line. You can see this line is even more emphasized here and just how important it is. Uh, if we get that monthly close above, which I think we're likely going to get, it should be pretty clear skies from that point. And of course, we already got a break of that trend line. If we get a break of this flat top here, it's in my in my mind is game over. OK, um, so AMC. We still have our shares, just so you all know, uh, we are still waiting for that gap fill uh, kind of between that 20 to 40 dollar area. Of course, as the Fed cuts rates, that's going to be bullish for AMC, right? They'll make more money. Uh, more people will have more money to borrow at cheaper rates to be able to go buy movies at the theater, all that jazz. Um, so we got the Golden Cross, right? RSI is pretty much as close to oversold as can humanly be. Um, again, it's not completely oversold on the monthly, but you guys can see, again, the correlation with crypto just rocketed to the upside. And of course, rates were at all time lows at that. So, and we're pretty much looking forward to all the same circumstances playing out this time around. Trump being in office, rates being at all-time lows, crypto bull run. It's all lining up perfectly again. Uh, so in terms of the weekly, I mean, it doesn't look super bullish here, but you have a potential maybe inverse head and shoulders here. Uh, again, this is not a perfect situation here. I thought this one line was going to be back. Th this line back here was going to be it, but apparently that's not it. So if it is an inverse head and shoulders, uh, in this case, AMC could go all the way up to 11 bucks. That could easily happen. All right. So I don't want to get too deep into the weeds on that. I do want to go over the crypto stocks as well before this video drags on too long. Okay. So you guys know <clears throat> last time we had MSTU, it was like, we got it down here in this $80 area. Well, you can see this thing rocketed up to 174. Um, look, I don't know where MSTR's top is going to be. I will tell you guys. As long as Bitcoin's going to the moon, which is probably going to be happening for many more months, uh, probably even the next 12 months, I would say, whether we get a mid-cycle correction or not remains to be seen. As long as that happens, MSTR are probably going to go to the moon, okay? So, uh, look, I'll, I'll give you guys this, okay? So Fibonacci retracements, local levels say that, you know, we could go as high as 525, um, we are a little overbought on the weekly, but just understand you can see back here, it just kept going. It didn't matter if it was overbought it. We didn't really start to, start to see any kind of pullback until the yellow EMA got up there. Uh, so we're kind of looking out for that. Um, in terms of the kind of macro here, this, this would paint a different picture, obviously. So if we look at the macro, you guys can see... Oh, well, never mind. I guess it pretty much goes to the same level. Okay, so maybe $500. So MSTR could definitely easily go up more. Uh, so I actually wanted to pull back here into the daily timeframes. So you can see we got overbought here on the daily. Um, again, this could equal kind of a slight pullback. Um, it could last for a day. It could last for a few days. This does happen where if it gets overbought on the daily or the four hourly during a bull run, it can pull back and then eventually rip higher again. After a couple of days, you guys can see it happened here before. So uh, for those of you guys that have this that are wondering why that is, perfectly normal. Okay, it does happen. Um, and a lot of times, and you can see this hasn't happened every time, but a lot of times it will go from overbought to oversold on the four early time frame. You guys can see that's one metric we use for swing trades. Not the only one, but one of them. Um, so what could be happening here is just a simple pullback into the EMAs on the four early time frame, and then boom, pop to the upside. Uh, but like I said, you know, 
Coinbase, MSTR, Kony, MSTY, anything Coinbase, MSTR related. Uh, as long as Bitcoin and crypto is going to the moon, these likely are still going to go to the moon with it. Okay. Um, in terms of the daily, I mean, it's a little overextended from the EMAs. Is it extreme? Not really. In my opinion, I don't think it's that extreme. Uh, so that's that one. Okay, going over Coinbase here, I'm going to start out with the weekly time frame. So nice little rejection off of the resistance here. That's kind of to be expected. It doesn't really shock me at all. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so in terms of the FIB levels here, so maximum FIB level here is $700. So that tells me Coinbase could very easily go way, way higher than it currently is. Uh, I don't, I personally do not think that Coinbase going to $700 is really all that unrealistic. The macro one here, you can see $1,500. Uh, I mean, if the all season, once the all season kicks in, if this thing is at 700 before the all season kicks in, then I would say that likely that could happen. Um, it would not shock me if Coinbase by the peak of the bull run was somewhere between, I would say at least six to $800 a share. I don't think that's really that much of a stretch. Um, one thing I do want to point out here on Coinbase, you can see we're already hitting overbought on MSTR, but on Coinbase, we are not hitting overbought. Okay. We just got the golden cross signal on the MACD and the RSI is slowly starting to tick up. It's not even close to overbought on the weekly time frame at this point. So I think traders are looking at this, seeing this resistance and thinking maybe I'm going to take some profit off the table. But again, after this huge fat green candle, I would not be surprised if it simply bounced off of this kind of gap we see here at 280 and then immediately started going back up. Um, again, of course, you guys know gaps love to be filled, right? So this thing will fill the gap here and then probably just scream higher from that point. Um, of course, RSI overbought. That is, uh, you know, I mean, that it's to be expected that maybe a day or two of pullbacks would happen after that. And then eventually we'll just pop back up. Same thing on the four hour time frame. Okay, so next thing I want to go over here is the miners. Okay, so this, um, you guys already know the levels um, on this video. I'm not going to go over it too much. So buy zone 18 to 20, kind of 21 on Mara. 29 to 59, 60. It's kind of where I'm looking immediately on the weekly time frame here. 218% gain. Uh, again, we just got the golden cross. Usually when we get that, it usually does go high for a very long time. It's not, you know, one green candle and then, oh God, it's going to dump. That's not usually how this plays out. The RSI is not even close to overbought. Okay. So do I think this thing is just going to keep on dumping? The miners are going to keep on dumping? Probably not. Um, Short-term pullback on the RSI, that's to be expected. Again, there are gaps on these miners, so they're probably going to get filled and then boom, pop off to the upside. Same thing with uh, Riot. In this case, you can see it very easily filled the gap. So I think, and we're touching the EMAs here, so I think likely Riot is probably going to go up probably sooner than Mar, in my opinion. Um, of course, we got the overbought on the RSI. You know, it'll, it'll cool off for a couple of days, like you can see here, and then boom, took off like a rocket, right? So went up, cooled off for a couple of days, went up, cooled off for a couple of days, went up, cooled off for a couple of days. In this case, that's current time. And then boom, we should see it go higher from that point. Uh, CLSK, same thing. So may likely come back and fill the gap. It might not even fill the entire gap before going higher. Overbought, again, when we get that overbought, it pulls back a little bit and then eventually it should go higher, right? So on the weekly time frame, we just got the golden cross here. I am expecting this thing to go higher. Um, again, I think the miners are just getting started. I don't think we've even warmed up yet. You can see we're not even close to overbought on the RSI. So maybe it goes down to 14 and then boom, pops off like a rocket to the upside. So targets up here anywhere from 20, I'd say about 22 all the way up to as high as probably about 43. Uh, those are more immediate. It could obviously go way higher than that. So about a 207% gain there. Riot, in this case, um, I, I would say it's probably not, probably not going to go much lower than this gap. Again, it does like to fill the gaps. And then in a continuation trend, theoretically, this thing should go back up. So about a 65% gain here. Again, roughly about that 1850 to... 
22, and then of course you have as high as 41. And as Bitcoin continues to push up, I do expect these things to continue to climb. I would not be surprised if they just keep pushing higher in the following days. Okay, HUD 8, this one's a little bit more concerning. I would say these top three undervalued, but HUD 8 is, this thing's really taken off. It doesn't mean it can't go higher. It could easily go higher, especially after the earnings, as you guys can see here. Um, earnings do play a part in this, but again, as Bitcoin goes up, theoretically, all of these miners should be profitable. So the markets know this. They're likely going to buy it up over the next three months, is my opinion. Uh, we're overbought on the daily big time, so... And we did hit a key resistance here. So if there is a pullback, um, it'd be roughly somewhere between 1730 to 2240. Of course, there's a little gap here at roughly about 20 bucks. Targets 28 to 33. And of course, you have above head 66 to 85. So uh, let's just say it goes back to the gap. That's all it does. So 65% to roughly about 338%. Cypher. Um, I'm actually curious to see if all of these have gaps on them. It does not appear to be so. Uh, I take that back. This one does actually have a gap. So yeah, 566, it could get filled. Um, again, that, that would line up perfectly with if it's overbought on the RSI and the daily, it would pull back and then fill the gap on the daily and then boom, pop off to the upside, give it time to cool off from being overbought. So... Yeah, that gap kind of sits at support. So I would say likely maybe it pulls back to about 550 and then we pop off from there. So 10 to 1060 would be the upside move here. 89% move, BTPT. Um, again, you guys got to understand these sell-offs will be brutal in a bear market. Um, not always will they be brutal, but a lot of times when the pullbacks happen, they do tend to be kind of over-exaggerated, and then the moves up tend to be even more bullish. Uh, that's usually how it goes here. So BTPT gap, 440 to uh, 490. It is currently getting filled, as you guys can see. That gap is at support. The RSI was overbought, so it all kind of lines up perfectly. Um so let's say it pulls back to 440 that's it and then it rips okay we turn we flip this from resistance into support probably going to shoot up to 1250 to about i'd say about 1450 somewhere in there i would not be surprised if this actually happens on these miners pretty quick like within the next four to six weeks okay so 231 percent gain here bitf um is there a gap on this one yes yes there is and it does appear that it also got filled so this gap is fully filled here as you guys can see so that's pretty much over with um again i don't know if these miners are at the earnings dates on um trading view is actually accurate for these miners but it does appear that they've come out so like i said i mean the earnings are important for the miners but the markets know that three months ago, Bitcoin was a 60,000, whereas now it's 90,000 and it's likely just going to keep going higher. Okay. They know this. They're probably going to load their bags, pushing the price up, knowing Bitcoin's probably just going to keep going up into the next set of earnings. Okay. So, all right. So enough of that. So BITF gap got filled. Um, so as of right now, I would, I would say somewhere along this trend line. So 215 to 240 as a buy zone three, all the way up to kind of about four bucks, uh, would be the potential targets here. So about an 81, 82% move. Iron. All right. Cover this on the daily time frame. Was there a gap? Uh, yes, there was, there was actually two of them. So, um, I don't know if it actually comes back and fills a second gap. I mean, it may come back later and fill it. Uh, not all these gaps have to be filled right away. A lot of people think they do, not necessarily. I mean, it could be filled during the bear market in 2026. That could always happen. So it could fill this first gap and then shoot straight back up. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. Um, so I would say maybe anywhere between nine to probably about... Pretty much, yeah, probably somewhere between 9 and the current price. 9 to 11, somewhere in there could be a good buy area. Um, and then the targets would be 13.30 to about 18.20. Again, that $9 area lines up with these EMAs down here, so that's a very nice correlation, 100% gain here. Hive. 
Again, you can see the RSI is overbought. There was a gap needed to, be, needed to be filled. It got filled. So we should be pretty much good to go to the upside after this. Um, it does appear that a lot of these did have earnings right around the same time. Again, I don't know if the timing of this is accurate or not. Uh, but yeah, the gap, gap got filled. So um, I would say, I mean, maybe if you're looking for further pullback, maybe somewhere between 350 to about 385, but you can see these candle tops up here right around where that gap is. Uh, so I'd say the current price probably somewhere maybe around 440 to about 460 could be a good buy area. And then the target's 580 to 760. About a 66% gain on that one wolf. Um, okay, so again, there was a gap down here, 650 to 680. If you're looking for a buy area, that potentially could be it right there. Um, I mean, it's, it hasn't quite come back to the, down to the gap yet. Uh, again, it came down from being overbought. That's to be expected before eventually pumping higher. Um, it can do, it can fill the gap and retrace from being overbought simultaneously. That can happen in this case. That is actually coming true. Uh, I'm not going to speak to the earnings again. You guys can kind of see what the earnings, what's going on with the earnings here, but, um, maybe, maybe a pullback into like this top EMA at six bucks, somewhere around there could be a good buy area. And then, of course, the target we're looking for is the previous highs up there at 43. Um, I'll actually have to map out some extra kind of areas for you guys on these charts. So 630% gain here. And that pretty much concludes it. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all later. Peace.